Today I'm going to show you how to make this macrame curtain. Also, stay tuned to the very end because I have a special announcement that's going to help everyone with their macrame journey. So stay tuned. Be sure to take a screenshot of today's project details. Now let's get started. The very first thing we need to do is hang our curtain rod and then take a couple of measurements. Because this is a custom project, you really want to know the size that you need it to be in the end. Next, attach your cords on your rod with a 12 inch tail. We need the seam allowance for the fringe later on, you'll see. To attach your cord, we're just going to tie a regular overhand knot. We do not want this knot secure. Now my curtain is 49 inches across, so to determine how many strands of cord we're going to need, we need to do a tension sample. And we're going to have to do a little bit of math, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so to check our tension, we're going to have to tie some alternating square knots. Two to three rows will suffice. And also, if you're unfamiliar with your knots, I would like to invite you to go check out my knot tutorial playlist. I'll leave the link in the cards above. Okay, so once we've got our two rows of alternating square knots, we want to take a measurement. So for four square knots on 16 cords, that turns out to being four inches. So if four inches is 16 cords, then 49 inches would turn out to be 196 cords. So this gives us a rough guide of how many cords we need to use for our window. In the end, I used 176 because we need multiples of eight. Also, my tension stretched just a little bit. But regardless, this gives us a good estimate on how many cords we need to use, and that'll help you to determine how many will fit in your window. Okay, so carrying on, we're going to be doing eight rows of alternating square knots. Next, we have to untie all of our overhand knots. They were only temporary, which is why we didn't want them very secure. Once you've untied all of your overhand knots, you want to take your project and have it hang over top of your curtain rod with your shorter ends on the back side of your project. Next, you want to take the first four cords in the back of your work and the first four cords in the front just like so, and then you want to split the back two cords in half. Then place your four front cords in between your two back cords. And using the two back cords, we're going to tie a square knot over top of our front four cords. By doing this, we are attaching the front and the back together, creating a very long cylinder, which is what our rod sits through. Okay, so I'm just going to demonstrate the next one for you again, and then we're going to carry on straight down the row. So again, we're taking the first four cords in the front, and then the first four cords in the back. And we split the back two cords, place the front cords in, and then tie our square knot around that. I really like the large knot detail that runs along the top of our curtain. Okay, so let's motor on through across our entire row now. Okay, so taking an extra strand of rope, we're going to be tying some double half hitches. I will do the first knot here in real time for you, but if you do need an extra hand, you can always go check out my knot tutorial playlist, or feel free to slow down this video by tapping the three dots on the top right corner. Okay, so to tie our double half hitches, we are only tying using the short cords that were in the back. They are now kind of in the front of our work now, but we are tying only with the short tail ends. The reason why we're tying a row of double half hitches here is because it does two things. The first thing it does is, well, it just looks neater, it's tidier, it kind of cleans up our ends a bit. And two, it further separates the front cords from the back cords, which gives our curtain a layered kind of effect. Alrighty, so I'm just going to zip on all the way across the top. Alright, so move your small front tail ends up out of the way and we're going to work on the pattern in the back. To accomplish this lace pattern, we're going to be using 8 cords in a section. 
and we're going to be tying some more double half hitches. So starting with the two middle cords in the center, we're going to be crossing them over and doing our double half hitches straight down kind of in a diamond shape pattern. This lace pattern is one of my favorites and I've done it before so I will link that tutorial up in the card above and you can give that a peek if you're curious. But for this curtain tutorial I'll do a patch here in real time and then the rest I will just zip through. So carrying on with our double half hitches we are going to create the top portion of our diamond shape. Once you've worked all cords, we're going to let go of our filler cords here and then tie a square knot in the center with the remaining cords in the middle. If you wanted to, you could switch up the middle knot in here. You could do a Josephine knot or maybe weave the ends, but um, I chose a square knot just because I like the congruency. I adore those large square knots we did up along the top and I just really thought it tied in well to do more square knots in the center. But you do what floats your boat. I like the square knots, but you know, you do what you like. So using the same filler cords, we're gonna be tying more double half hitches to complete the bottom diamond shape. And once you've tied your double half hitches all the way straight down to the very bottom, you're going to find that you have a gap. To close that gap, all you have to tie is one more double half hitch using your two filler cords. And it doesn't matter which side you tie it on. Okay, I'm going to repeat the same process with the next eight cords, and then I'm going to show you the next following row. Alrighty, so we're going to alternate just like we do with the square knots and we're going to work the next eight cords that are in between the middle of our first two diamonds. And also to give it more of a lacy look, we're going to space it out just a little tiny bit, about a centimeter and a half or so, and carry on with our double half hitches. And no, I haven't forgotten about the first four chords. We're going to work those as well. I like to tie this one after I've done the next diamond just because it gives me a better guideline. When you're tying double half hitches, um, your cord and your design go in the direction that you hold your filler cord. So to have that guideline in place is really helpful and I'm better at determining which way the angle goes. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this is the basis of the pattern in the back of our curtain here. I'm going to carry on and do the next two rows. While I'm working on this, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank all of you. We hit this big milestone here on YouTube. We hit 10,000 subscribers. You have no idea how much your support means to me. I, I appreciate every single one of you. To celebrate this YouTube milestone, I am making myself this curtain and I made myself cupcakes too. And to show my appreciation to you, I have a special announcement that I am going to announce at the end of this video. Okay, so back to the pattern. For my third row, I did six more sections here. And then for the seventh one, I am just going to tie the top half of our diamond here. For my curtain here, I didn't want it to go straight across. I wanted to have a little bit of an arch in the center. 
So tying half of a diamond here really helps give that gradual kind of arch effect. However, if you wanted to, you could go straight across too. That looks nice as well. But for mine, I decided to have a little bit of an arch. And of course, I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. Okay, so it's time to deal with the fringe at the top. So let's bring it all down and give it a little bit of a trim. I snipped mine at about an inch and a half in length. While you're snipping, of course, be very careful not to nip any of the cords in the back. And now that it's all trimmed, we need to brush out the fringe. As you're brushing out your fringe, you might notice that you have some tail ends that stick out a little bit. That is no biggie, we just go right back in and snip it some more with the scissors. The more time you spend combing and trimming, the sharper your line will be. And while we have our scissors out, we're going to be cutting along the bottom as well. The easiest way to cut a straight line is to attach a string line onto your rolling rack. I have two string lines because I wanted mine arched and that gave me a better guideline to where to trim. And this is the finished curtain. I absolutely love how it turned out. And now for my special announcement. I have created a Facebook group where we can all come together and share all of our work together. It also gives me a better opportunity to help you if you have any questions about any of the patterns that I've done or if you want to learn more about macrame. I will leave the link to my new Facebook group in the description box below as well as in the comments. I really hope to see you guys over there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider subscribing and being a part of this awesome community we've got going on here. Thank you for being a part of my journey and I'll see you in the next one.